Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you've enjoyed your Easter break and um, enjoyed time together with family. Today we'll be carrying on from where we stopped, um, where we left off two weeks ago. And we're going to be looking at criteria 3.1, which is the factors affecting well-being. So the aim for today is to identify the factors that affect the well-being of your patient or client. So learning objective, really, it's just the one, which is to understand the biopsychosocial model of health. We're breaking that down. We're going to look at the biological, physical factors that affect health. We're going to look at the psychological factors that affect um, well-being, rather, and I understand. Sorry about that. Social factors that affect well-being. Right, so what is well-being? What comes to mind when you think of the word well-being? So I'll throw a few words out. I think words like fitness, strength, wellness, happiness, healthy. So your first activity is to think about what well-being means to you. And then make a list of all the things that affect your well-being. So make sure it's personal. So you can pause the video at this point and write down uh, what well-being means to you. Make a list of what, of what affects your well-being. Um, and then put it in the comment section. Um, that is listed activity one. So well-being um, has been defined um, um, I believe by Oxford Dictionary as a state of being happy. Okay. Um, no, I think that's my definition, actually. I don't think that's Oxford. <laughs> so wellness is a state of being I'm, I'm comfortable. It's a state of being happy. However, I'm, well-being is a noun. So it's a thing to be achieved. Okay. So um, another example of a no that could be achieved could be happiness. The thing with um, well-being and thing with happiness is that it, it is, sorry, I don't know why my computer keeps doing that, is that it is abstract. So what does the word abstract mean? It means um, it is it, something that is abstract is a thing, but it's not tangible. Okay? Another thing that could be achieved is money. Okay? So... Um, I can, money's tangible, I can see where the money's going, I can hold money, but you can't hold well-being, you can't hold happiness, so it's abstract. So things that are abstract tend to be difficult to achieve because also it is subjective. So what happiness looks like for me could be completely different to what happiness looks like for you. That's the same with well-being. So what I could consider well-being could be I physically fit, and um, emotionally well and you can feel you can i'm um, define your well-being to be i'm um, i'm being strong um and all having money to do all the things that you want to do okay so i'm um, patient a and patient b have two different definitions for what well-being is to them however i'm um, or in addition <laughs> well-being is fundamental for health um, you hear the um, the kind of phrase health and well-being because they go hand in hand. Um, it's they 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 um, it's difficult. They're not mutually exclusive. It's difficult to have health and not have well-being, or to have well-being and not have health. Um, so it is important for your patients that they are in good well-being. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh. It is. I'm oh, sorry about that. It is important for them to have good well-being because it means that they will subsequently have good health. Um. So going back to our famous definition for um health by the World Health Organization, um health is that state of being complete. Again, state very similar to health. Again, that state of being in um complete physical, mental, and social well-being. Okay, so it ends with well-being. Again, that definition for health has well-being in it. Um, but there has been, um, like we discussed in class, the fact that it's not possible to be in a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. 
So um, well-being could be the ability, we could add the well-being stability to overcome challenges, to, to still um, pursue health in the absence of income, to still pursue health and well-being in the absence of um, physical health sometimes. So we could, if I was to um, create my own definition, I'd say it's a state of being comfortable and um, being able then to overcome um, challenge and still pursue health. Okay, that's my definition. So don't put it in your work. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, we're going to be looking at the biopsychosocial model. So if you've got a pen and you're taking notes, I'm... Um, Google this guy called Engel, that's spelled E N G E L. In 1977, he came up with the biopsychosocial model of health. Okay, so it's coming from that frustration of health is not a state where you are in all three. He believes that there are several factors that combine to determine whether you have good or bad health, and those factors um, are biological, psychological and social so in the center there is well-being okay that elusive state of complete biological physical um biological psychological and social um wellness okay so let's look at each determinant so the biological determinants under that i've listed gender genetics physical health stress and chemistry okay you might feel that there's some that i've missed i um, please go ahead um, and um add that as well so go back to the list that you made actually i um, as we go through this see if you can tick out some of the things that you have said um, are determinants for well-being and see if we have them on my list okay so how can gender affect your health so actually worldwide women tend to live longer than men however women tend to have overall poorer health compared to men so being male or female will so your biology being male or female will determine whether you have good or bad health so that will also determine whether you have good or bad well-being um your genetics again can determine your health outcome it can determine your life expectancy so if you inherit for instance a um, um, a gene for cancer which is probably one of the most popular ones um, that can determine how long you live that can determine the quality of life um, another biological determinant is your physical health so if you are sick if you're struggling with a um, lifelong disease that can obviously affect the quality of your life that can affect your wellness and your well-being stress is one of the most stress is a killer yeah so i'm um, and it, it, it can be biological because it could be your chemistry that determines i'm um, if you have stress yes there are other determinants that can affect your stress like income um or relationships but it can also be biological as well, and that can affect your health. Psychological determinants on my list, I've got behaviors, personality, attitudes, um, religion, belief, social support networks, so this could be family, relationships, etc. So behaviors, what how you choose to live your life, okay? It, the most popular behavior harmful behavior is smoking or drinking can determine whether you have good or bad health okay uh, arguably behavior could also be a social determinant as well your personality so introverts and extroverts i know there's much more personalities than that um, but if you were an introvert and you didn't want to talk about your feelings or um you could have symptoms for um for for a um, deadly um disease and then choose not to talk about it that can affect your health your personality could also affect your health positively you could be a social person you could be um a positive person and that could affect your health positively your religion 
your attitudes, your belief system could affect your health positively or negatively as well. Um, there are some religions um, that could inspire hope, which could affect recovery. There could be others that, um, for instance, we have the Jehovah's Witness who won't um, accept animal products or blood. That could affect their health negatively. Social support networks. Um, family members could be a good sense, um, good kind of, um, what's the word? Could be, could affect your health positively. Um, but some family members, for instance, domestic violence, could affect your health negatively as well. Um, social determinants. Now we've looked at this already, um, so I won't go into it too much. Um, income education we've said education i'm um, not always yeah but mostly will determine the kind of jobs that you're in so that will determine your workplace which obviously determines the kind of uh what, what determines what's in the bank which uh, determines where you live um, and all that can obviously have a play uh have a big role in your health outcomes and your life expectancy and the quality of life that you live which obviously affects your well-being right in 1991 dalgren and whitehead came up with sorry i'm just going to drink because i'm losing my voice <clears throat> there we go right in 1991 dalgren and whitehead came up with the rainbow diagram the determinants of health model so this model highlights all the things to determine whether you have good or bad health. It starts from your age, so whether you're young or old, that can determine what kind of health you have. Being male or female will determine, seriously, what kind of health you have. Your constitutional factors, your build, and whether you are thin, whether you are fat, whether you're tall or short, can affect, I know, there is research so it can actually affect your health positively or negatively your individual lifestyle factors so this is your behavior whether you choose to eat healthy and exercise whether you choose to gamble whether you choose to smoke that can affect your health i um, obviously positively or negatively your social and community networks we've talked about that and then your general social economic cultural and environmental conditions which is all the stuff in green can affect your health positively or negatively so please do do some more reading on dalgren and whitehead right identifying determinants within healthcare as healthcare professionals will you always see what is affecting your patient's well-being no because some of those um, determinants aren't always visible but going back to criteria 1.1, the more you um, establish that positive relationship and communication between yourself and your patients, you start to ask the right question. So knowing what determines, knowing those determinants for health will enable you to know how best to create a needs assessment for your patient, will enable you to know how best to treat your patient because you know the factors are determining their well-being and you do that by communicating you do that by asking the right question and when you find out what um, those are then you can actually signpost them if you find out that um, it's a psychological determinant that your patient um, is struggling with you can signpost them to, to things like a um, mental health um um mental health um care you can for cognitive behavior therapy etc okay so i am actually running out of time so what i'm going to do is um your next activity is to look back at fiona's case study and i want you to identify some of the factors that affect her well-being i'm going to put up her case study again under activity two and see if you can identify some factors that affect her well-being once you're done with this video i want you to click onto the zoom link and i'm Please write down any questions that you have and it's a it's literally 15 minutes that i've had to squeeze everything so i'm sure that i've not explained things to the best of my ability so please ask me any questions that you have and um 
we can have a discussion and just do a quick catch up as well to see how you guys are getting on. Okay, bye for now. <laughs>